Next.js has supported TypeScript for quite a while, which meant that you could take your JS files, convert them to TS, and you'd be good to go. But with the latest release, it also comes with the ability to create a TypeScript project template by default, which can greatly speed up your initial workflow. So let's take a look. To create a new Next.js project, open up your terminal and execute npx create next app. Now here we can name our app as well, and we will give it the name demo-next. And because we want to use TypeScript, we will pass in an additional flag minus minus TypeScript. Now this will create a new Next.js project for you, which we have called demo-next, and also run npm install for you, so you are all ready and set to go. It will bring in React, React Tom, as well as Next, and because we are using TypeScript, it will also bring in the type definitions for React. Now that's all you need in order to create a TypeScript Next.js project, but let's dive through the code a bit more so that you can use it most effectively. We cd into this directory for the new project called demo next and open it up in our IDE. Now the key folder to focus on within this project template is the pages folder. It contains our various application entry points or pages, as well as an API folder for various API endpoints. The template comes with a built-in index page, which demonstrates a very basic HTML that is returned from a React component, as well as an API endpoint called slash hello, which returns an object containing a name property. Now let's demonstrate this example application by starting our server in development mode. We open up the terminal and execute npm run dev. This starts serving our pages as well as our API endpoints at localhost 3000 by default. Let's go ahead and open up that URL and you can see our default index page which is provided by the index.tsx react component. Similarly, if you visit the slash API slash hello endpoint, you can see the JSON object being returned by our API endpoint. Now the key proposition of running the development server is that we can jump into our code and modify anything, for example within the index.tsx page, we can modify the get started by editing text to be get started by modifying text. It will immediately get recompiled and live reloaded by the server, so if we jump back to the browser, you can see the updated modified text. And the live compiling and loading of new code also works for server API endpoints, so if you jump to the hello API endpoint and modify the return text, for example, from John Doe to be Jane Doe, it will still be compiled and live reloaded by the server. But of course, within the browser, you'll have to make your own new request to see the updated response. As you can see, Next.js provides an excellent development workflow where you can modify your front-end or your back-end code to have it live reloaded by the server. Next, we will demonstrate how you can add a new page and a new API endpoint. Now, as an example, we can create a new page at slash social by creating a file called social.tsx within the pages folder. Within this file, we will have to export a simple React component and whatever this component renders is what will be returned when the user visits slash social. Here, we have a very simple React component that renders an h1 containing a subscriber count and a button to modify the subscriber count, which invokes this handle subscribe function, which increments it by one. Now, once we've created this file, if we visit the URL at slash social, you can see this component being rendered within the UI and we can interact with it and it behaves exactly as expected. Now, creating a new API endpoint is very similar to creating a new page. We just need to create a new file within the pages API folder. Here we are creating an API endpoint called slash visits. And within this API endpoint, we have code very similar to the hello API endpoint. The only difference is that in this case, we are returning a data object that contains a visits count as a number, which we are keeping in memory over here. Normally you would have this offloaded to some database. And every time the user makes a request to the visits API endpoint, we increment this visit count by one. Now, just like the slash socials page, this will become available under the API slash visits URL. And we can visit that as many times as we want to see the number increment with each request. Now, of course, maintaining these simple files within the pages and the API folder is not something that is going to scale as your pages and API endpoints become more complex. Fortunately, within these folders, a file name is essentially the same as a folder with the same name containing an index file. So as an example, we can rename social.tsx as the social folder containing a file index.tsx. Similarly, we can rename the visits file to be the visits folder containing the file index.ts. This allows us to consolidate more features regarding the social page or the visits API endpoint into these corresponding folders. 
Now beyond its excellent developer ergonomics, there is a key reason why you want to use Next.js, which is its server-side rendering support. Let's take a look. Now when we visit the slash social page, a key feature about this page is that it is actually being rendered with this HTML on the server and being returned to the client. So if we open up the network tab and look at the initial response, you can see the HTML is present over there and you can even preview it in the Chrome developer tools. Now this is great for two reasons. The users get an immediate HTML response that shows them what the final UI would look like. And secondly, this is something that is viewable by the search engine as well, which is great for search engine optimization. Now the final thing that we want to demonstrate is how you can build your Next.js application when you are ready to deploy it to a production server. In addition to the dev script within the package.json, which we've already been running during our development workflow, there are two more key scripts. The first one is a build script, which is going to take our code and compile it down into something that can be run much faster by a live server. We can run that by executing npm run build, and this is something that you would do as a part of your deployment process. All of these assets are actually created within the .next folder. The second script is what you want to run to start your production server, and that is simply npm run start. And of course, you can see that it boots up more quickly and will return results faster. And in terms of user-facing behavior, it is exactly what we saw before during development with our two pages, as well as our two API endpoints. In terms of full stack frameworks that provide great developer ergonomics as well as excellent performance, Next.js is pretty much the best choice you have right now in my honest opinion. If you enjoyed this lesson and would like to see more content like this, then smash that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.